Welcome to Daily News Weekly, where we highlight the stories from the past week that you might have missed. I'm your host, Michael Sheridan. A British man in Berlin has been claiming that he's been having a rather hard time with his penis. Danny Polaris is a singer and performer and was in Germany when he apparently took unprescribed erectile dysfunction medication during a night of festivities. The next morning, he found his erection had not subsided. In fact, his towering inferno had apparently become so pronounced it was growing painful. And he assumed that after a period of time, it would go down, so he didn't really do anything about it, but it didn't. It kept staying up, standing at attention, saluting the flag, as it were. Eventually, Polaris did go see a doctor, and that's when he discovered he was suffering from priapism, which is basically a condition where the train just simply never leaves the station. While this story is a bit humorous, you know, you can kind of understand that it'd be rather difficult and uncomfortable for anybody to suffer from uh, that kind of condition for prolonged periods of time. But what seems worse is the way in which they have to treat the condition, because apparently the big trick is to just get blood away from that particular region of the male's body in order to alleviate the swelling. In the case of Polaris, he was apparently treated numerous ways some of which included injecting a needle into his privates uh, to extract blood to try to get the the erection to go down. Uh, It also included um, drawing blood from his leg, you know, drawn from the vein in his leg in order to get to, you know, move the blood from one part of his body to another part of his body. It doesn't seem to be very clear if any of these treatments worked or what exactly his circumstances are, this condition supposedly came on about two weeks ago. Looking at his Instagram, it seems like uh, he has uh, been alleviated of these problems, but it's not really clear if he's still suffering from it after all this time. Now, Polaris is apparently using a GoFundMe page to help raise some money to help cover something. You know, he doesn't have medical bills to deal with like he might have if, uh, if they were here in the States. But apparently he just wants some money for the time he's lost dealing with his um, male problem, uh, which seems a little strange and a bit dubious to me, but, you know, whatever. Now, speaking about erectile dysfunctions, a 63-year-old Bronx man has apparently developed a very rare condition, which is causing bone to form around his penis. Now, this was a case written up by doctors from Lincoln Hospital and Medical Health Center in the Bronx. Now, this story starts when an unidentified man walked into an ER in the Bronx. Apparently, he had fallen down and landed on his butt, but he was suffering some kind of pain in his knee, so he decided to go to the doctor to see if anything had happened to him. During the interview with the doctor, he revealed that he was suffering some kind of discomfort in his private area. Doctors checked it out. They did an X-ray. And what they discovered was quite shocking. The man was suffering from an exceedingly rare condition known as penile ossification, where the penis tissue effectively turns into bone. Now, this is a condition that is so rare that there are fewer than 40 cases of it published ever. In this particular case, it's not clear what exactly was causing the man's penile problem, largely because when he discovered what was going on with him and the doctors told him about the bones that were forming around his junk, he actually fled the hospital against medical advice. So last week was our first episode after a break, and I was really surprised to see so many comments that were just simple, hey, how you doing, and welcome back, glad to have you back kind of comments, and I just want to thank everybody for tuning in and leaving a comment. We also talked last week about a story out of Galveston, Texas, where a photo went viral of two police officers on horseback who were leading a man they had arrested down the street, uh, walking several blocks. Um, And it caused some controversy because the man they arrested were black, the cops were white. It caused a whole kind of problems. And is now being investigated uh, uh, for whether or not the cops had done anything inappropriate. Jennifer Hensley on YouTube commented, those cops need to find another career. They are part of the problem. When we pay them to serve and protect, I see them doing neither. And Thorn Johnny Gaming on YouTube wrote, oh my God, he had to walk four blocks down the road. Great idea. Already have two well-equipped officers to handle the issue, 
but why not bring in another one that could be somewhere else just so he can be cozy going to jail? I don't care if he's white or black or polka dot. Protocols are set in place for a reason, and to judge judge them with no prior experience is arrogant. I think there's fairness to all that. You know, the cops were apparently acting according to protocol. It's still a question of whether it was a good idea. Was it necessary? I, I, I think there's valid criticisms to go around. And our last comment is from Ubifire, who wrote on YouTube, please read this comment in the next video. Hashtag, I think I pronounced that right. A community in Virginia is being terrorized by an evil supervillain going up to people's houses and leaving special surprises on their doorsteps. Old TVs. Reports indicate that several residents in Henrico County were surprised to find old boob tubes outside their front doors. And in several cases, the perpetrator was captured on door cams depositing the sets. The person appears to be wearing a pair of overalls and has a television for a head. The city went about and removed the old TVs from the houses, and the person responsible may actually face charges for illegal dumping for putting the TVs out there. However, police do note that they really just see this as some kind of bizarre prank. Which makes this story kind of funny is that this is actually the second time this has happened. Somebody dressed in the same way apparently left as many as 20 televisions on doorsteps last year around the same time. Now the question that is haunting residents of Virginia is will the villainous TV man return in 2020? Stay tuned. I think this past week has really shown that we are increasingly becoming a hostile, angry country. And people maybe need to start learning how to chill out and unplug. For example, the Montana man who attacked a 13-year-old kid because he didn't take his hat off during the national anthem. Kurt Brockway was at a fair at the Mineral County Fairgrounds when they started playing the national anthem. That's when he noticed a 13-year-old boy who didn't remove his hat. Now Brockway claims that he told the kid to take his hat off and respect the national anthem, to which the man claims the boy told him to F off. That's apparently when Brockway allegedly snapped, grabbed the kid by the throat, lifted him up, then threw him back down head first, and he hit the ground. The kid apparently suffered from skull fractures, a concussion, and according to reports, his ears were bleeding for hours afterwards. Now, this story has gained a lot of attention, not specifically because of the violence, but because apparently, according to local reports, Brockway, uh, or at least Brockway's attorney, is claiming that he did this because Trump's rhetoric about the national anthem, I guess, made him feel justified in taking violent action against this teenager. Now, I don't in any way think anything Trump says justifies violence. I think that's not fair and not right. People are responsible for their own actions. But I think it's all part of the vitriol that exists. Everything becomes some screaming match. I mean, I I can't even do a conversation or have a conversation on social media without, especially when it gets into politics, without it breaking into some kind of people yelling at each other, uh, you know, on social media or comments getting angry. Look, I'm not saying that there isn't a reason for people to be upset about things in the world. I'm just saying that maybe we need to learn to do it in a productive uh, way that's respectful and not resort to violence. Ah, I hit the lens. And with that, we bring another episode of Daily News Weekly to a close. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button down below. Don't forget, share this video with your friends and family. Let's hear what you have to say about the stories we talked about this week. And thanks again for watching. It is really appreciated. Yeah, that's it.